Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions and we're located in San Dimas, California. Today we're going to tackle the full ceramic crown preparation for zirconia on a natural tooth mounted in the Typodon. As you remember from the last video, we did the three-quarter crown and I'm just reviewing that with you just a little bit because this has the same margin design that we're going to be shooting for today, the same finish line. And you can see that we have these little hollow grinds, the mesial and distal, for resistance form. For the full crown preparation, obviously, these are not going to be necessary, but I thought it'd be nice to just take a look at this uh, in comparison to our preparation today. So today we've got natural tooth. It's mounted in the Typodon. And you can see that there's been considerable amount of wear, and the tooth has been patched in many places with a composite on the mesial, buccal, lingual. If we look more carefully at the, let's take a look at the lingual first. This large composite is undermining the mesial lingual cusp and it's decayed. You can see it there in the over-contoured mesial composite, these huge facets that are decayed and uh, problematic. And then of course the facial composite. So this tooth certainly needs a full crown. So let's take a look at the full crown for zirconia. So here's the crown preparation, and let's overlay the crown that's going to go on top, and we can see the amount of space that's required. We have a finish line that is going to be a fillet, which is going to have a declination angle of 10 to 15 degrees, not quite a shoulder. Clusal clearance of 1 to 1.5, we want to be careful of being less than 1, and an axial depth of the finish line of 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Any less than that violates several principles with respect to zirconia and leads to oftentimes fracture at the margins. So we're going to make sure that it's beefy enough. And one of the things you can do is use a burr like this 837, which has a 1.2 millimeter diameter. And that's kind of nice because that falls right between the 1 and 1.5 that we need for occlusal clearance for zirconia restoration. Now if this were Emacs, we'd want to go more, 1.5 to 2. That's with a preparation that's primarily on dentin. Emacs can be used in a more conservative manner if you have nothing but enamel on the occlusal surface. Then you can bond it like a veneer in cases where maybe you're opening up vertical dimension and you want to have a significant amount of bonded ceramics on top of that. But for the most part, for crowns, so we are removing the lion's share of the enamel and we'd want to have 1.5 to 2 millimeters for lithium basilicate. With the zirconia, we can be more conservative, but we don't want to be less than 1 millimeter. We really want to try to get 1 to 1.5. Significant amount of work has been done in this area by one of my friends, Tasir Suleiman. He's at University of North Carolina, and he and I uh, converse about zirconia all the time, and it's just being abused a bit right now by being made too thin. We need to get a little bit thicker. One of the things I don't like is the Verti prep because the Verti prep does not provide for natural tooth contours often, nor does it provide for enough bulk of the zirconia at the finish line. Studies have shown that zirconia fails at the finish line more commonly than anywhere else, and that's usually because it's made too thin. So let's get it at least 0.6 millimeters, preferably 0.8 millimeters for zirconia. This is an 856 burr in an RGS-3, which is one millimeter. I'm showing you here that the tip of the burr is a little bit more than one, maybe 1.1, and the burr can be utilized as a measuring guide. So we can go a little bit more than half the depth of this burr axially to get the adequate amount of bulk that we need for a strong zirconia restoration. I'm going to speed up the tape uh, here, the video, and get a little bit faster. So let's uh, kind of glide through this part. We're just going around to create this fillet finish line. A slight downward inclination to the uh, finish line, maybe 10 to 15 degrees, with a rounded internal and enough bulk for the ceramic to be strong. This is not a chamfer. This is not a shoulder. We use the term chamfer inappropriately. A chamfer is a bevel. A chamfer has a declination angle relative to the axial wall of at least 45 degrees. 
sometimes 60 or 65 degrees. Notice the secondary plane that we place on the facial. We place one on the lingual as well. And this is not the functional cusp bevel. This is just a secondary plane to follow the contours of that adjacent tooth to create a little bit more uniformity in the ceramics. So the preparation is coming along. We have some refinement to do, but the main issue right now is look at the decaries underneath that composite. And I like to do this sometimes is just leave the old restoration in place, prep the tooth, and then decide what I need to do. It's not always necessary to disassemble everything if the composites underneath are in good condition. So you can see that some of the composites are, are good and some are not so good. So we're going to remove the ones that are questionable. And uh, I'm going to utilize a, a burr I really like that's shaped a little bit like a 330 burr. It's actually shaped like a 331 burr, but it's diamond. And it's a coarse grit, so it's got the 150 micron, or 125 micron, excuse me, grit. This is the 6831. So I like to think of this as a, uh, a wider 330 diamond with coarse grit that works really rapidly. So we're just removing the carries, uh, and I've sped up the uh, video here as well. Once we get to the point where the periphery is clean, then we move on to the slow speed. And if you're going to use electric handpiece, probably want to have this going at about 5,000 RPM. So you can go a little slower too if you like. And after we remove the carries and get that completely clean, it's rather shallow, so we're going to just remove all the stain in this particular case. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, on the uh, lingual with the round burr and make sure everything's totally clean. And uh, after we do this, then we can just simply block it out with the material of your choice. You could definitely use a glass enamer, a flowable composite, a paste composite. It really isn't going to make a big deal because this is going to be sealed inside of a well-fitting restoration that's going to circumferentially seal it. We're going to discuss how we cement the zirconia. Here's the block out being uh, completed in subsequent video where I would talk about whether to bond it or use a, a regular cement, glass enamer even. This is the uh, fine finishing burr that is a complement to the 856 and this is called the 8856. The diamond particles in this particular burr are only 30 microns in diameter average so it makes for a much smoother surface. It's great to do this with a little bit lower speed this is where I use my microscope. I'm not uh, getting to use it here in this particular case, but I like to use the microscope for these types of finessing uh, procedures. You also want to try to round off uh, the sharp edges a little bit. Uh, it makes for a little bit easier mill. Uh, we don't want to have the milling machine over mill because of a sharp edge, which it can do. You know, when you look on the inside of your zirconia crown that comes back from the lab, take a look and see if there are any little circular marks inside of it. That's, that's an indication of the need to over mill to accommodate a sharp edge. So you have to understand that the zirconia can be a little bit thinner in those particular areas so it's probably better to reduce 1.5 rather than 1 so that you can have a little bit more room for the zirconia if it has to overmill. So all these little sharp edges need to be rounded. The rounder the better. I like to maintain anatomical morphological form uh, because I like to have uniformity in the restorations and not over reduce a tooth. There are a lot of people that will just make this tooth flat across the top and round everything aggressively. Uh, that works. It's not a problem, but I prefer to preserve more tooth structure. Is For me, it's just more fun, and I think it's nicer to save more tooth when we can. Once again, you can slow this down if you want uh, on the electric handpiece, or even use a slow speed, whatever uh, your preference is, is totally okay. So uh, here we are with the uh, finished preparation. I have a few photos I took of the finish. 
I like using the rubber dam when I can because it provides me with such great retraction and access to the margins, access to it without the tongue. It's been a lot of fun making this video. I hope you all are safe during this pandemic and I wish you the best. See ya.